Pete Dempsey. And I'm heading to the heart of Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines. There, I hope to find the Kalinga tribe, once feared as headhunters. Central to their identity were their distinctive tattoos, separating the men from the boys, the elite from the average, protecting against sickness, injury, and death. Only one tribal tattooist remains, and she's 96. I'm on a quest to find her and ask her to give me a tattoo before this art form dies forever. This leg of my journey is taking me through Luzon's largest province of Isabella, onto the rugged valleys of Cagayan, where I brave a road rampage, they're huge! A bug banquet. Oh, I'm feeling itchy. And a breathtaking view inside the mountains. It's beautiful. I'm riding the rugged route up northern Luzon, the island's eastern edge, where the blue Pacific Ocean meets the vast Philippine farmlands. With this view, most of the time, you'll find yourself pulling over just to take in the sights. I'm on my way up to Isabella now, but I had to stop and take in this view. It's just incredible. I love this stretch of road. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of this place called the Pacific Coast Highway back in California, except the water is so blue and the hills are so green. The colors are just so vivid here. I love it. As I drive further north, I notice that I'm passing fewer towns, hitting less traffic, and the scenery is just incredible. Now this is a ride I'm really gonna enjoy. and I've just arrived at Magat Dam. I've read that this is the first largest dam in Asia. For me, it makes for a beautiful road to take and I can't wait to see where it leads me. The scenery isn't the only interesting sight in this part of the Philippines. In the town of Kauaian, the cowboys actually ride the beasts. I made it to Isabella, and as I'm riding through town, I notice a lot of commotion going on down here. I'm always attracted to a crowd, and when I see Caraval lined up, I gotta see what's going on.
really crazy. Wonderful, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect such huge animals to be so fast. Right. How often do they have the races? We do it a lot. Actually, it's not just one here in, in Kauaian, but throughout the country, you would have carabao races. Uh, this is really also to, to feature uh, these guys that are really helping our farmers. How long have there been carabao races? I mean, is it something that's very traditional? Yes, it is very traditional. As you can see, uh, like Hawaiian, the whole province of Isabella is very agricultural based. So we really use our, our carabaos almost daily. They are uh, very helpful to our farmers and uh, they're the lifeline of our produce, which is rice and corn. It's really fascinating. So the farmers are really proud of the carabao that they're riding. Yes, it's like their best friends, like their Labrador. Oh, I love uh, that. So it's really part of their family. And do they give them names as well? Yes, they have names. It's really a, a family affair. So this is the final race. All the winners of the last race are going to race each other. I have one peso and number five. There? Have, I'll, I'll do number 11. Number 11? Number 11. All right, let's see who's going to win. <laughs> OK, let's do it. It seems like it's my lucky day because my Carabao won! I feel like I'm on a roll, so I'm going to try to ride one myself. But in life, not everyone is a winner. And this sore loser looks like it's taking its loss pretty hard. I don't think I want to ride that one. Well, I wanted to try and ride the Carabao today, but I think he's a little worn out from all that racing. I'm probably better off sticking to my iron horse. <laughs>